Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you that are new to my channel, I want to say welcome. And for those of you that are a part of the Fab Wining family, welcome back. My name is Crystal and you're watching Fashion, Beauty, and Wine. In today's episode of Wine Down Wednesday, I am going to be trying out several different types of box wines. Yes, this will be the first time on my channel that I'll be trying out box wines. And I'm super interested to see what these box wines taste like. Now, the box wines that I'm going to be trying out are from a company called Wine Cube. These box wines are 500 milliliters, 16.8 ounces, and they have about 13.5% alcohol, all three of the wines that I'll be trying out today. And that comes out to about three glasses per box. Now, a typical glass of wine may be five ounces or six ounces, depending on where you are. But if you divide this one up evenly, you're going to get about 5.6 ounces per glass. Now, the three that I've gotten today are a Pinot Grigio, Rosé, and a Pinot Noir. Now, these don't have any years, so I'm just assuming they're whatever... <laughs> whatever grapes that they have around doesn't seem to be blends. I'm looking on the Pinot Grigio and it doesn't really say if it is a blend. It doesn't say anything but except that it's a California Pinot Grigio. So based off the prices and I don't remember how much I got these for but I will list it on the screen right here. Don't think <laughs> this is going to be one Pinot Grigio. It's definitely going to be several different types of Pinot Grigios. And it says that these wines have received over 300 plus awards. So I'm super excited to try these wines out. Now, this Pinot Grigio says that it's going to have aromas of green apple and citrus. And then it says, I'm delicious, tells a little bit about it. It says, bursting with vibrant white peach citrus and green apple flavors. This crisp wine is your go-to for poolside picnics and patios. Enjoy with grilled shrimp, fish tacos, and light pastas. It also says, I'm simple. Who needs a corkscrew? This convenient packaging features a twist cap for easy on-the-go opening. And if you're not super thirsty, you can screw the cap back on and save some wine for later. It also says I'm award-winning, sourced from premium California vineyards. Our wines offer exceptional quality and value. No wonder we've won 300 plus awards. Not to brag, but we're pretty awesome. The last one says I'm portable. From the beach to the poolside to the mountains and beyond, this lightweight shatterproof cart goes wherever life takes you, including the couch. We don't judge. So it's really, really cute, first of all. And on the side, it says seriously fun wine. So that's why I'm wearing my dirty dancing shirt. I felt like, you know, these, the, the packaging, the marketing is so fun. So why not just have some fun trying these wines? Now, it says that these wines are bottled by Trinchero Family Estates. And this is a Target brand of wine. So I'm, I'm guessing that this wine is sold exclusively in Target. And that's exactly where I got it from. Um, it says store in a cool, dry place. Now, I did store this in the refrigerator. On the front, it has a scale from sweet to dry. And then it has that this wine is going to be a medium dry wine. I feel like people buy box wines when they're having company over or they're having a huge party and they don't want to splurge too much on a nice bottle of wine. So you definitely go to the store and you grab those box wines, like the big ones with the little pump, and then you serve those to the guests and they won't be none the wiser and then they'll drink it out and love you. So it's definitely marketed to younger people that are on a budget or you just want easy access to wine. So this is definitely a type of wine that you would go to if you were in a position like that. So without further ado, I have my glass <laughs> and and I'm just going to be trying a sample because the key in today's video is not to get drunk. It's just to taste the wines and give you all my feedback. We're going to put this wine to the test and we're going to see, you know, how great it is. I'm just going to pour this so you all can see how it looks. Now, right off the bat, it has like a, almost like a platinum, platinum silver with a hint of green. So... When I look at this glass of wine, it's going to be a lighter wine because generally the lighter, the, the more clear a wine is, the lighter it's going to be. So I'm definitely getting green apple and I'm getting some peach flavors. I'm even giving, getting a little bit of guava flavors, but then you, you still have that citrus and acid. 
And so far, this wine is pretty drinkable. It's not bad. Like, I would definitely recommend this wine if someone was looking for an affordable, you know, cheap wine that had easy access that they could drink anywhere. You're going to have citrus notes, like it says. You're definitely getting some green apple and huge flavors of peach and guava. Like, I'm getting a lot of tropical flavors from there. But, it, yeah, it does describe it as having white peach flavors. And um, it's definitely what it says it is. So, um, we're one for one so far. <laughs> the next wine that I am going to be trying, and honestly, I'm going to tell you all this because... I wanted to do a little experiment, but I opened this wine up a week ago and I tried it. So I do know what this wine tastes like, but the purpose of doing that was to see if this wine stood the test of time and to see how long it lasts. Now, generally with box wines, they do advertise that these wines can last a little bit longer than your typical wines that are bottled in glass. So I want to see if this one lasts. Now, a little bit of backstory about this one. On the front, it says it's going to have aromas of raspberry and watermelon. Again, this one is going to be a medium to dry wine. It has 13.5% alcohol as well. And then under the I'm Delicious, it says wonderfully crisp with a fresh watermelon fragrance and lush wild berries and citrus fruit flavors. A versatile wine for all seasons. Rosé pairs perfectly with crab cakes, pulled pork, and spicy Thai cuisine. What I'm going to do is pour a little bit so you can see. And right there... This one has like a very, very light salmon colored and it's very, very light. I'm going to taste this one for the second time and I'm going to tell you what I initially got versus what I'm getting right now. Now, I'll tell you, when I initially drank this wine, it was very bitter. It, it had a very spicy finish and maybe it didn't open up or whatever, but... Now this wine is open and I'm getting watermelon and I'm getting raspberry. Oh my God, I'm getting plum and it's really, really nice. Like it's almost like I'm drinking candy, but it's not sweet. It's going to be citrusy and it's going to be crisp. And I'm actually liking this a lot better than I liked it before. Something else is that I want to mention is that these wines have expiration dates on. And it says that this wine is best enjoyed if drank by the 17th of July in 2019 for the Rosé. And then for the Pinot Grigio, it says it's best enjoyed if it's drank by or before August 10th, 2019. The Rosé tastes a lot better than it tastes when I initially tried it. So I definitely feel like it's worth the money. Like, I don't know if it's, you know, <laughs> my taste buds are just open to the fact of trying this wine now or what whatever it may be but this one tastes a lot better open than it did when I first opened it and honestly to tell you the truth I tried it two times just to make sure just to make sure and only until now has it opened up and it's given me exactly the description that the box is telling me so kudos to this wine Two out of three so far, Wine Cube. So the next one that I'm going to be trying is the Pinot Noir. Again, this Pinot Noir, it's going to be medium dry. This one says that it has aromas of raspberry and vanilla cream. As far as the flavor profile goes, it says, This elegant, silky Pinot Noir lets you indulge your million-dollar fantasies with vibrant flavors of raspberry, cherry, and sultry vanilla cream. Enjoy with ahi tuna, duck meatballs, and mushroom bruschetta. I already have a glass of the wine cube poured. This is what it's going to look like. And for some reason, it's giving me really dark colors for Pinot Noir. Now, this doesn't say if it's blended with something. Generally, if something has about 70% of one grape, then they're going to say that it's that grape doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only grape that you have. But anything that's 70% or more, you can name it one grape. It's considered to be that style of grape, if that makes any sense. Let's try it and see if this is going to be three for three. 
right at the tip of my tongue. I'm getting raspberry. I'm getting cedar chips. I'm getting a spicy finish. Mmm. Maybe a little cherry, but the only thing that I'm not getting is vanilla. I'm getting more spice. I'm getting more smoky notes. And while peanut noirs are typically more on the lighter side, I would definitely say that this is a medium body peanut noir. And um, I'm getting baking spices, baking spices. That's what I'm getting. Almost like the flavor that you get if you dip your tongue into a rye whiskey. Like I'm definitely getting just baking spices from this. So even though I feel like they've described this for the most part with how it tastes, I was expecting this to be a little bit lighter and I was expecting to get more of that vanilla which would kind of balance some of the acidity and make it a lot smoother but I didn't get any of that and I don't think that this wine is well balanced like I'm getting too much acidity I'm getting too much spice it's just not what I typically go for if I had to give it a pass or not I'm gonna have to say like this one I'm not really rocking with I'm not really feeling I don't think it's a bad wine if you're a beginner and you feel like all wines taste the same. I would say great, pick this up, but I'm not getting what it's really saying and I don't think that I like it so much. I don't like this one, so two out of three is not bad. Anyhow, I had a fun time trying these wines. Like overall, I would say that these box wines weren't so bad and it's, giving me a different <laughs> respect for box wines. Maybe box wines are not so bad after all. Now, if you all enjoyed this video and you thought it was interesting, entertaining, or informative, don't forget to press that thumbs up button. And if you are watching this video and you're not subscribed, take a moment to press that subscribe button. And if you're not following me on all other social media platforms, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Musical.ly, all under keywords Fashion, Beauty, and Wine. I want to thank you all again for joining me. And until the next video, I wish you all nothing but peace, love, fashion, beauty, and wine. Bye-bye. <laughs>